Be here now. Just be here now. Welcome to the Krishna Das Pilgrim Heart Hour. In this podcast, Krishna Das shares his warm-hearted and down-to-earth path to the divine. If you are interested in supporting Krishna Das's podcast, please go to beherenownetwork.com/kd.
I lost it there for a minute. <laughs> it reminded me of what, something that happened when we were on tour in um, <coughs> Australia many years ago. Ty was still playing with me then. <coughs> we had done, we had started in Melbourne and gone all through Australia, many places. But uh, so many people came in Melbourne that we agreed to come back and do it another Kirtan at the end of the tour and at that by that point it was really hot I don't know we went in the summer that was the last time we ever went in the summer to Australia because everybody's on the beach usually but uh, it was so hot we got to the hall and there was no time to do a sound check and I mean we were really fast sound check <clears throat> and I was sweating and there was no air conditioning. It was really, I was really cranky, very cranky. So I was just really pissed off and I, just in a bad mood. And we started playing. Everybody's singing along. And at some point I, in my mind, I just said to Maharaji, I said, what would it be like if I could really sing to you? And immediately this wave came over me and I just started going like, yeah, you know, it was, and Ty was sitting playing tabla and he was looking over at me like, like trying to follow me. You know, I don't know. I was just like, yeah, it was too funny. And finally I, I came back to earth and it was just hilarious. I can still remember the look on his face it was like, <laughs> So, all right, let's do some questions and stuff. What do we got? Oh, so we're doing something new this time. And so, well, ultimately, all ways lead to the same place, our true being, our true nature. Uh, I certainly don't have any answers for you. I, 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 I do whatever makes me, whatever I feel like doing. And I don't even know why you think you have to choose right now. Just do something. Maybe it's just a way of your mind keeping you from doing anything. <clears throat> just do something. Uh, and ultimately, little by little, maybe you'll feel more comfortable in something and that, that's what it is. That's what it'll be. It's not, it's not such a big deal, you know? Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Uh, just, just go with it, you know? The whole, actually, the whole idea of <clears throat> trying to, uh, work through this situation as part of your path anyway, so no one can tell you what to do. I do it all. I don't care what it is. If it makes me feel good or helps me when I feel bad, uh, that's what I do. Singing to Krishna, singing to Tara, 
chanting Om Mani Padme Hum, which is to Avalok Teshvar Chanrezi. They're all the same, ultimately. The paths may be taught differently. Of course, if you've taken or if you're going to decide to take a transmission, a lineage, and join a particular group, well, then go for it. Once you join a group, you should stay with it as best you can. Unless you find that it's just after years, it's just not working for you. Then I would talk to your teacher and, and tell him your problems or your situation. But this, this whole egoistic nonsense of thinking you have, first of all, you can't surrender to Krishna anyway. Who do you think you are? Krishna surrenders you when he wants you, not before. And same with the Buddha. It's just, you think you're doing something in Buddhist teaching, supposedly. You think it's up to you to do the practice. The way of surrender is a very different way of thinking about things. But the path is actually not any different. I mean, the actual results of the path. Yes, some teachers would say, some teachers of this, Krishna would say, oh no, this is the way. And some teachers of Buddhist path would say, no, no, they're not all the same. You have to do it this way. Maybe they know. I certainly don't. But I could see that you're stuck in this point, and this is all egoistic nonsense. And just, you know, relax, take it easy, enjoy life, and do what you feel like. You don't have to make a decision. And you surrender happens. It's not something you do. Your mind, your ego will never surrender. Never. When the grace is there, surrender happens. So prepare for grace, purify your heart, prepare for grace. That's that path. The other path is a little different, but it depends what type of Buddhism you're talking about. In Theravadan Buddhism, it's very cut and dry. You do this, you concentrate, this is what you do, this is what you do. In Mahayana Buddhism, you cultivate compassion, and, that's, and the goal is to uh, develop what they call bodhicitta, which is, well, two types of bodhicitta, but Simple, simply a feeling of one with all beings, kindness and compassion and caring for all. And in Vajrayana, it's also, again, different. The first basic step in Vajrayana is to unite your mind with the mind of your guru. That's devotion. So then from there, you get and you get the sense of direction, and then teachings can be given to you, uh, different types of teachings. So, yada, yada, yada. Just uh, enjoy the fact that you're totally fucked up, and, you know, what are you going to do? You know, uh, a lot of these questions are about what should I do if, if this is happening in my life, Chant. That's my answer. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not Dr. Ruth, you know. I, I'm not, I can't give you advice what to do in your life. You have to figure that out. What I, what I can offer you is my practice, which helps me figure out what to do. So if you do your practice, that'll help you figure out what to do. Hopefully. So we all have problems in life and we have to deal with them. And it's very hard to, to see them clearly sometimes. And it's very hard to know what the best thing is to do. But we don't have to know what the best thing is to do. We just have to do the best we can and try to work through these issues. That's the whole path. It's not like, okay, I'm going to fix my life, then I can get spiritual or whatever that means. No, this is, this is the karmic situation. Find a way to deal with it in the best way you can. And by not hurting others and, and uh, not hurting yourself. It's not easy. It's not easy to, to distinguish the difference between those two sometimes. And it's very hard to, uh, to know what to do. But... There's no playbook here. There's no book that gives all the answers. 
There is, but that's inside your own heart. So calm yourself down, chant, do some practice. Try to become a good human being. What does that mean to you? Okay, so, you know, I... Oh, boy, this is a good one. Do we really want to go there? Why is sexuality such a challenge on the path? Hare <laughs> Rama. Well... It's interesting, you know, a few years ago I was on tour in uh, Southeast Asia and we're in Hong Kong and I took this uh, shuttle train way up that goes straight up this big mountain and then you walk around the mountain and from the top of the mountain I looked down on Hong Kong and all these huge skyscrapers were squeezed together and there were ships in the harbor and there was it was there was more construction going on and and it was you could feel the energy of this place you know and i thought this is so weird this how did this happen all we have to do is eat sleep shit fuck and that's the deal what, where did this come? How did this happen that everybody gathers together and business is done and money? I mean, it's, I, it just looks like I, I was astounded by it. It was amazing. So, you know, we're in human bodies. And the body itself has different hungers, not just for food, but it has hungers for sex, for procreation of the race, of the, of the human race. And, uh, and pleasure, and anything can be a, 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 what's the word you use? A challenge, so to speak. Or you can embrace it and uh, try to see what it is. My guru was married and had three children. Uh, we didn't know that when we met him, actually. We only learned that after he left the body, which was very far out. but. We've, since then, we've met his children. And uh, so, f- obviously, for him, sex was not a challenge. Or uh, it didn't seem to interfere with his becoming enlightened. So, we each have karmas to work through. We each have hungers. And it's, I think, from my experience in my life and the people that I know, You have to eat. You don't have to overeat, but you do have to feed certain things. And once again, Hanuman, the path of Rama, this type of devotion is not a path of renunciation. I've read that shloka many times that Hanuman not only bestows liberation on people, but he makes it possible for them to satisfy the desires that will be helpful for them to, to have, to satisfy. So, a lot of times, uh, sexuality can be very, very uh, painful and unsatisfying and scary. And the, the energy of that can also be very difficult to understand and feel at ease with. But that's mostly psychological stuff. Animals don't seem to have a problem jumping on each other at the right times. But human beings have confused pleasure with happiness. And that's the real crux of the problem. It's not just sex. It's food. It's listening to things. It's craving pleasure from the outside world. And then, of course, it changes. It doesn't last. So that's one of the real issues. Anyway, uh, good luck.
<laughs> really, uh, Someone was asking me uh, the whole time that I knew Ramdas. Were there any teachings of his you can think of that didn't age well, or you disagreed with? Uh, I w- I never listened to him about relationships. <laughs> never. Uh, I barely ever spoke to him about relationships because I everything he said just meant no sense to me. It was not something I could work with. Uh, and he had issues with his own relationships too, you know. So uh, earlier in life, you know, his, his uh, religious, r- romantic relationships, sexual relationships. So it's something that that was uh, that was something I never spoke to him hardly ever about my relationships. How does one transition from the body when it's time? How to let go when the ego is clinging? <clears throat> well, that's a good question. Uh, you know, what they say is that the only thing you take with you when you leave your body is your state of mind. And obviously, most people in this world don't work on developing a, a uh, harm, harmonious state of mind, a, a, a wisdom mind, and a mind that understands or feels things in a certain way, in a so-called spiritual way. So there's a lot of fear, a lot of clinging when the body is being uh, dropped. Um, The point is basically that if you don't practice now, if you don't develop insight now and understanding now and don't develop the ability to let go of negative states of mind now, then you won't be able to when the body is dissolving, when when your attachment, the connection to the body is dissolving. And it'll be very difficult and maybe painful and maybe scary. So, so that's, uh, that's the idea. One has to work on it now because certainly, absolutely certainly the time will come when the breath that we take will be the last. And how we meet that moment has a lot to do with how we live. You can't expect to be angry and greedy and nasty to people your whole life and then be smiling when you leave the body. You can't expect to, uh, it's unreasonable to expect that, uh, go through life not caring about yourself or others and not working on your issues and just being an emotional uh, mess your whole life that it's going to be easy. To be to leave the body in a good way, and the problem is most people don't really feel in, in the West. They don't really believe in rebirth, uh, uh, re, so-called reincarnation, rebirth. So there's no reason to do anything. Yeah, you know, I'll be gone. Who cares? That's unfortunately most likely a mistake, but that's also karma. And one can always turn within. There is nothing, when it comes to turning within, and when you really want to do practice and understand the need for it, nothing can stop you from doing that, no matter what's going on in the outside world. You can always, every moment, be practicing, or to just use a phrase, 
There's a lot of books on this stuff. Andrew Holacek wrote books. There's a book on my thing that Living is Dying. He talks a lot about the Tibetan tradition of uh, hearing in the in between, which is called the Tibetan Book of the Dead, or liberation in the bardo, liberation in the in between states between birth, between death and rebirth. It's they they seem to know what's going on there, but for most of us, let's become good human beings now. Let's work with our fear, our selfishness, our greed, our manipulative stuff, and let's try to expand our hearts now. And that will help us when it's time to leave. Do I feel that my bond with Maharaji was particularly special in comparison to other devotees? Absolutely not. Maharaji made everybody feel that they were special because they were, they are. That was the amazing thing. Like Larry Brilliant said, it wasn't just that I loved him when I was with him. It was like I loved everybody. And conversely, you feel, you felt loved in a way, but so did everybody else. Mostly. And everybody who, you know, was uh, attracted to him in a certain kind of way. We all felt that we were, it was special. Every single one of us all sitting around because he spoke, he would say something to somebody, but the, uh, another person would get the message. It might be, he might tell a story to somebody or say something. And then somebody remembers, I had the dream last night and it was just about that. And he could, he was doing that. That was happening, let's put it that way, all the time. Uh, so we all felt special. And that's not, I don't think that's wrong. We don't think special like it's mine and nobody else has it. It's like we felt loved. Everybody felt loved in a way that we had never felt loved before. How to let go, how to know when to let go and let God, and when to apply God helps those who help themselves. I don't know. <laughs> you can let go and let God and still do what you have to do and give up the attachment to the results. That's one thing. Uh, but that's a good, a good quandary to work through in your life. And the, the, the more practice you do, the more deeply you move along the path into the heart, those kind of issues just get resolved themselves. And, nor do they really have to be resolved up here. They just dissolve in the heart. So... There's no quick answer to that, but I just gave one. How to make Maharaji Nimkaroli Baba my guru when he is not physically anymore with us? Well, it's not up to us to make him our guru. If you feel attracted to him, it's because he's present with you. Why would you feel attracted to him? There's so many other things to do in life. There's so many other Babas out there. There's so many great saints and Siddhas and Devis and Ma's and everything out there. Well, you know, if you're attracted to him, that's the pull. That's him pulling you to some degree, you might say. You're not going to get a certificate of acceptance as a devotee. He doesn't do that. It's up to the devotee to follow his heart. And then eventually you realize you thought 
you think you've been thinking you're following your heart, but actually you're being pulled into your heart by the inner guru. So. Do you ever have workshops or courses to teach people to sing or leer kirtan? No, I don't. Just sing. Nobody has to teach you. And leading kirtan is not a job. It's spiritual practice. And I didn't learn how to do it as much as I just absorbed by singing with people in India. That's where I was kind of in, immersed in this stuff for the first time. So, but Jayutal gives kirtan workshops, or what does he call them? Something, where he teaches people how to lead and sing kirtan. So if you want to do that, you can do that. But I don't do it because I just sing. And, and then you just sing. If I'm... I, I don't know. I, it's about love. How do you teach someone how to love? You don't have to lead kirtan. You don't have to be a, a kirtan leader. If it's your karma to do that, if it turns out to be good for you, you'll do it. But it might turn out to be a problem. There's a lot of egoistic stuff that can go on when you start to feel important and that you know more than other people. It's not the... Uh, it's an interesting situation. Was I on the bus with Ram Dass when they found Maharaji at the Kumbha Mela grounds and went to Dada's house? Yes, I was on the bus, absolutely. That was the bus from Bodh Gaya on our way to Delhi. You know, so we got to the, the bus got to the Mela grounds and like I, I had said before, the, the, it was absolutely deserted where there had been 12, 15 million people a week before. There was no one. And the bus made this long, slow turn because we were just going to turn around and go. And as we're making this turn in the other direction, there's Maharaji walking. And he just kept walking. He didn't even look up. We, if we hadn't seen him, he didn't go like, hey, I'm here. He just kept walking. And Ramesh Radas was the one who saw him. And as the bus, as the bus approached, you know, he just looked at Dada. He just said to Dada, he said, his, the man who was with him, he said, they've come. And, you know, uh, it's extraordinary. How can we practice empathy and dispassion? Well, one thing, one thing you sh that uh, is not useful is to try to stop your feelings. You know, feelings arise. Uh, in, in the dispassion part, you, you, you can't crush your feelings. Empathy is not exactly compassion, but it's a good beginning when you start to be aware of what other people are feeling and, and how they might be hurting and why, how their pain is causing them to act in certain ways, even ways that might be difficult for you to deal with. So the development of compassion is to see all that and wish them well and really feel for them and see clearly uh, that their own issues are causing them to act this way, which is causing them tremendous suffering. And so there are many books about this. Uh, you know, Maharaji, we said, Maharaji, how do you find God? He said, serve people, love everyone, serve everyone. That's empathy and compassion and 
This passion, I'm not even sure what that means. It, but if it means to you that you kind of have to close off your feelings to protect yourself, that's not correct. That's not useful. So, somebody once helped to pronounce the line in the Hanuman Chalisa, Hat Bajra Ur Dwaja Biraje. Hat Bajra, Hat means hand, Bajra is the thunderbolt, Ur Dwaja Biraje. That means that's the, uh, Dwaja is the, Dwija is the, the cord, the sacred thread. Hata Bajra Ur Dwaja Biraje. Oh no, it, no, I'm sorry, that's not the sacred thread, that's Janeu. What is that? Dwaja Biraje. Anyway, I can look it up. Hold on. Hata Bajra Ur Dwaja Biraje Kande Munja. Munja Janeu Sade. In your hands shine a mace. The, the Vajra is, in this case, a mace. And, uh, and you have a banner. Dwaja Biraja. You're wearing a banner. A banner. I don't even know what that is. A banner. Must be some like a, a little shawl or something. Hatha, Vajra, Ura, Ura, Dvaja, Viraja. There you go. Can I tell about my dark nights and how I moved through them? No. <laughs> too much, too much, too many dark nights. But chanting and my connection with Maharaji and his grace and my longing to be in that love and my inability to function in the world when I don't feel that love. That's what pushed me through all those dark nights. And, uh, and still to this day, that's what helps me every day. The practice, developing a regular practice of turning within one way or another, whatever that means to you. And if you want to read about it, you know, the book I wrote, Chants of a Lifetime, describes so much darkness, you'll be too happy. And there's also an audio book of that now. Okay? So that's my plug of the day. Once again, if you're able to and you feel moved, please... Help us out as best you can. Thank you. Jagadambe Jaya Jagadambe Ema Durga Ema Durga Oh.
Jagarande Jede Jagarande Hema Durga Hema Durga Oh. Uh-huh. 
Charna Saroja Raja Nijamana Mukuru Sudha Balamo Rabubara Bamala Jasu Choda Kupalacha Buddhihin Tanujan Eke Sumeram Pavana Kumas Yaram Bala Buddhi Vidya Devu Rukale Sabika Tiavara Ram Chandra Padaja Sharanam Jaya Hanuman Gyan Guna Saga Jaya Kapi Siti Hun Loka Ujaga Ramadurta Aturta Baladham Anjani Putra Pavan Sutanam Mahavir Pikram Bajarang Matinavar Sumati Kesang Kanchanavaran Biraj Subesa Kanana Kundala Kunchita Kesa Hat Baj Urdhvaja Biraj Kande Muja Jane Usaj Shankar Suvan Kesari Nanda Eja Pratapa Mahajagabanda Vidyavan Guni Ati Chatu Ramakaja Karibe Koatu 
Tra bruciare tu su ne becco da si, amma la canna si, tama na basi, su cimarupa, di si a hende cal, e catarupa da relanca cera, imarupa da resur sanghari, Rama Chandra ke kaj sonwar Ay sajivan lakkan di ay Shira gubira shira lai Gupate kimhi bhot barai Mama ma priya bhartai samavai Sasabadan tumaro chasagam Sakhi Shri Pati Khanta Laga Sankadika Brahmani Munisa Marad Sharad Saita Ahisa Yamakumbir Gapal Jahante Kabhi Kobid Kai Sakhi Kahante Uma Upakar Sugriva Inkinha Rama Melaya Raja Paddina Maro Mantra Bibishanamana Lankeshwara Bhai Sabha Jagajan Kasahasra Jojan Paraban Iliyotahi Marura Palajan Rabhu Mudra Kaila Mukamahi Kala de langi gaya chara jannahi Dura gama kaju jagat ke jete Sugam anugrat umare tete Tam duvare umara kavare Otana kya vinu pezare Sav sukalahe tumari sharan Mara chaka ka uko dharan Apna tej samaro ape Ino lo ka hank ten kamp Utpe saashun kat nahi aave Mahavir chab naam sunar Nasi roga hare sab peer Chapat nirantar hanumat bir Sankat te hanuman churave Anakram bachan yam jolave Sab paranam tapas viraja Tin ke kaj sakal tum saja Or man or the joko elave, so we amit the jew and the pala pave, charm you go per the top of the mar, he per the sud jug to ujiar, sadhu santa ke marakova, a surnekandan ram dulare. Ashta Siddhi no Nidhi ke data Asovar Dina Chan ki mata Rama Rasayan Tumare Pasa Saddara Hora Gupati ke dasa Tumare Pajana Rama ko pave Janam Janam ke Dukha Bissarao Kal ragu bar pur jai, jahan jan mahar bhakt kahai. Or devata chit na darai, anumat se sar sukh karai. Sankat kate mite sab pir, jo sumere humat bal bir. Jai 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 Hanuman Gosai Kupakaro Guru 
దేవకినాయ్ జోసత్త బార పాట కడకో శుత హే బంది మహాసుఖోయ్ తులసీదాస సదా హరి చేర హీ చే నాథన తన్నాయ సంకట హరణ మంగళ మూర్తి రుక్షియారాం రామ లఖన సీతా సహిత హృదయ సుడభూప శ్యావర రామ చంద్రపద జేశ్వర మంగళ మూర్తి మార్తనంద సకల అమంగళ మూల నిఖండ మంగళమూర్తి మారుతనంద సకల మంగళమూళనికంద శ్రీరాం జయ రాం జయ జయ రాం 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 శ్యారాం బాబనుమా సంకటమోచన కృపానిధాం శ్యారాం జయ బాబనుమా సంకటమోచన కృపానిధాం శ్రీరాం జయ రాం జయ జయ రాం శ్రీరాం జయ రాం జయ జయ రాం ram jay ram jay jay ram ji ram jay ram jay jay ram ji ram jay ram jay jay ram ji ram jay ram jay jay సీతారా 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 Ram 
राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम If we know anything about a path at all, if we know that there might be a way to live in this world in a good way, with an open heart, maybe some peace of mind, if we know anything about this, it's only because of the great beings that have gone before us. Out of their love, out of their kindness, They left some footprints for us to follow. So, in the same way that they wish for us, in the same way that they wish for us, we wish that all beings everywhere, all of us, be safe, be happy, that all of us have good health and enough to eat. And may we all live in peace, And at ease of heart, at ease of heart, with whatever comes to us in life. Good to be with you again. May we all remain together in this heart space now and for all time. Namaste. Mm-hmm.